How's everybody doing? You okay? That is much better. I'm Paul. I'm Surma. And what we normally do is we do a show called Supercharged, uh, where we live code things for people. Uh, and at Polymer last year, the Polymer Summit, we uh, did live, live, live in front of people live. And we thought, let's do it again. And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. But what we normally do is we normally have one of us code and one of us talk. But today, we thought we'd have both of us code. So not, not at the same time. I mean, we could. That would be oh, stupid. We probably sh shouldn't. We shouldn't. No, we're stupid. We shouldn't do that. So, Sam is going to code first. Um, do you want to tell them what, you, what we're going to do? All right. So, I, I had the idea that, or actually, I exported my Twitter archive because I wanted to have it and look through it. And it turns out that the file that contains all my tweets I've ever done is about 16 megabytes worth of. Nice and small, which tiny. is a big file. And I'm not going to open it because VS Code doesn't like big files, apparently. But I have the uh, first f four tweets in an extra file. So that's basically what we're looking at. And you yeah. can see my first tweet apparently was in 2008, where I say something fundamental as, got an account on Twitter, yay. That's, like, that's everybody's first. It's the universal first tweet, I think. It's like, either that or, hello, world. Like shouting ah. into the empty echo chamber. Yeah. Nobody cares. No. And what we wanted to do is, how would you use this file in a web app? Bring that file back, because there's something I, I noticed here. This isn't an array of objects. Oh, exactly. It's not an array. It's literally just concatenated JSON objects. Object, so object. they end here. The next one starts. There is no commas. In fact, yeah, the JSON. Uh, Pause is kind of, if you get rid of the, the selection, it's got a red wiggly under there because it thinks, well, it's not real JSON. Yeah, right? it's not a JSON file because there's more than one JSON object in there. So there's going to be some difficulties. So I guess before we lose more time, we just yeah, get go, started. Go, go. Sorry. And the first thing we always have to do is type really fast, and suddenly we have copyright Yay! errors. We like snippets, too. Um, um, so I'm going to work with some scripts. So what we're going to do is I'm going to work with my part of the program. And I'm going to use the, <laughs> the new stuff, which Serma.js. That's me. Brilliant. Actually, okay, I should fine, call it fine. Fine. That's the game you want to play. I should fine. call it Dust Serma because that's my Twitter handle. Okay, like it. Follow me. Uh, wow. Always branding. I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to use a module, which is a new thing, which a allows me to be defer by default, which is something you should always be doing. But also, we get to use the new fancy import, which we're going to use later. So let's write a new file and look at the tweet and, and fetch the tweets.json file. So I'm not going to put anything else in here. I'm just going to put this here and call it dustsurma.js <laughs> and go in here, go to the Networks tab. And if I load this, you can see I just downloaded 16 megabytes of right, JSON, which is quite a bit. Me. This was really, really fast because I like, have a server running locally. The second you actually are on the internet, this is going to take a while. So yes. you would have to wait seconds, if not minutes, before you could do anything with the data. And that's actually a really important point. We, the web is a streaming medium, and we actually want to treat it like that, rather than saying, I'm going to hold everything back, and then ta -da! So what you would usually do that's is the official sound. The official I received a response sound. Yeah. So what you would usually want to do is you want to take respond and then call.json, which turns the response into JSON. This wouldn't work here, because as we have established, it's not actually a JSON object. It's just it's a bunch yeah. of JSON. This would fail with, um, there is like trailing data. Please take care of this. So can't use it. The next option that most people probably are aware of is, oh, not that, That's dot not text, which would give you a 16 megabyte sized JavaScript string. And I'm telling you, on mobile, you're not going to have a good time. <laughs> so we're now going to go into the new territory and use something that probably is not as well known. because. because uh, namely, that response.body is a stream. Ooh. What kind of stream? Thank you. I was waiting for your line. Sorry. So, uh, <coughs> it's a readable stream, meaning that it's a stream that you can read. OK. So, uh, let, 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 you let came me... in for the education. You get it. I'm going I'm to explain it more. So a readable stream is an asynchronous data structure in, um, some people are going to scope. It's a little bit like a promise, but that can be re recalled multiple times. So every time you get a new result back. It's a pipe of data, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a pipe. Pipe, pipe of data. Yeah, it's we a pipe. Just, we, and we um, consume data off it, right? And every time you get the next chunk in the network delivered. But because it is from the network, or because it's a stream, once you get that chunk, it's gone. It's been consumed. 
and therefore there can only be one reader at a time. Okay. And so what we need to do is we need to get a lock for this reader, which you get by get reader, which means you have now a reader object and you're the only person who can read from the stream. And if you wanted to, and what do you do if you want to get rid of the lock? Is that like um, a there, get rid of reader? Re release lock. Oh, cool. I, I knew that. That seems really, OK, get reader and release we don't, need, we don't need that, though. So we have a reader. And as I said, a reader is an asynchronous data structure. And so I'm going to make use of async functions, because otherwise, this is going to get weird. Because with async functions, we can write code in a in, in an linear imperative way, even though it is asynchronous. So we can do stuff that is very old school and usually very hated upon in JavaScript, while true. Ew. Ew. Really? So Yes. Oh, this isn't production code, by the way. Yeah, it's not production code. <laughs> How I mean, say it, that? It will work. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. But there's, yeah. So what you get? So when you want to read from a stream, you would call your reader and say, read. And since it's asynchronous, we have to await that. It's basically a promise, but with a wait, it just inlines all the handling, and it makes it much nicer. And what we get from there is a value and a done flag. A little bit of destructuring going on there. All the new features, man. Oh, yeah. All the new. So, nice. the, so if, we are do, if the stream is done, it's end of stream, then, the, then it's done. So done is true, and we can just return, which is why a while true loop is OK, because that is our cancel condition. This is how we break out of it. Oh, I'm still really iffy on it, seriously. Anyway. So what is value? Let's just try out what value actually is. So I'm, I now console log the value thing. I'm going back here, going to open the console. And we can see we just get a whole bunch of view and aid arrays. This is literally the raw data from the HTTP response packaged in nice typed arrays in JavaScript. And you can see that they're all pretty much 32 kilobytes big. But that is more of a coincidence than anything else. So for example, the last one is smaller. There's probably some smaller ones somewhere in the middle. I don't know. But it's a number you can't rely on. This might be an implementation detail of Chrome or my Go server. It doesn't matter. The number, not really relevant. OK, so now we are receiving these chunks. And they're 32K big, coincidentally. But the problem is really that we have these whole series of JSON objects in my tweet file. And now a tweet could be, there could be multiple tweets in one chunk, or there could be one tweet spanning multiple chunks. And that's not really helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a so-called transform stream, which is going to transform our stream in a way that the chunks and the JSON objects align. So basically, every chunk after the transform, we can be sure is exactly one JSON object. Got it. So you can pass that to json.parse. And you would get yes. a JSON object. In the end, we should be able to do so that. Instead of just arbitrary splits at 32K, we want it per object. Exactly. So okay. now we're going, to use, we're going to use the reference implementation for transform streams. They're going to be in the browser at some point. So a transform stream, to explain, is a readable stream, a stream that you can read, a writable stream, a stream that you can write, put together into one object where you put things in at one end, do transform some transform, it. and get it out at the other end. Cool. But they have not landed yet, so I'm going to have to rely on the reference implementation. So I'm going to import from transformstream.js. And now we have it and can use it. And let's see how to actually use it. So as I said, response.body is a stream. And if you have a transform stream, you can use pipe through, which means here's a transform stream. Pipe that data through the transform and give me the result. So here we would create a new transform stream. And that transform stream takes a transformer. Not Most to be confused is. with the cars. So what, so what we have to write is a JSON transformer. You sure you don't want another new inside there as well? Let's go three deep. We need Keep more. I can, I can give you a variable. So this is going to give us the JSON stream. So as a return, we get the transformed stream, which is now a stream of individual JSON objects. Okay. So afterwards, we're not going to get the lock on our body, but on our JSON stream. And that should work. So let's take a look at the actual juicy bit, which is the JSON transformer. So class, JSON transformer. It has a constructor, which we are going to need, but not right now. And a transformer has to has, have three methods. It's a start, which is called at the start. We don't need that. There's flush, which is called at the end. And there is, attention, transform. Ooh, ooh, that's what we need, right? That's what we need. And the transform, you get two parameters, the chunk that you now have to transform, and the controller. And the controller is 
something that allows you to control your stream. That, let me explain with code. I think code is always better than trying to hand wave all the things. It allows you to do stuff like to, to, to define what is the output of this chunk. You can have set all kinds of different signals, like back pressure and your cache is full. And we don't need any of that. We just want to see I've got a feeling if you Google for Jake Archibald streams, you're probably going to get a really good article. I think it's just going to appear. It's just, yeah, well, that's the worry if you say streams too yeah. many times. I'm, I'm going to stop up. mentioning the word now. But so we take the controller. And with NQ, we can put something onto the output queue. So just to show that it works, I'm just going to not do any transform. Whatever comes in, I'm going to take it and put it into the output. It's like a null transform. So do nothing. Ideally, everything should work the same. Yes. So it's still doing nothing, just downloading the file. But now we have a point where we can inject our code to do all the transformation -y bits. So. Um, how do you do that? And the thing that we have to do now is we have to kind of write our own little JSON parser. Really? It's not as complicated as it sounds. <laughs> OK. So what, what we will do is we will collect all the chunks that belong to one JSON object. Sure. And once we have those, we'll squash them together, get a string. Oh, and then you can the you and queue the, you're right, fine. And yep. then we start over. OK. So in this chunks array, we're going to collect all the chunks that belong to one JSON object. And now we have to figure out how do we know when we've reached the end of a JSON object. And we do that by counting curly braces. So what we're going to do is whenever we get a chunk, byte of chunk. So we're going to loop over all the bytes in our chunk. That could be const. That could be const. Sorry. Sure. Sorry. Inadvertent. Ring from Ch Nit Stop it. Review. Sorry. Carry on. Uh, we're going to convert it into a character because we know JSON is always ASCII, so we don't have to worry about oh, yeah, UTF-8 no, you... Unicode shenanigans. Yeah. OK. Well, that's um, good. And then we're going to switch over whatever character it is. And we care about it's either an opening brace sure. or closing brace. A closing oh. brace. Well done. Wait off. So, and we're going to start, and we're going to try to count how deep in we are. So whenever we encounter an opening curly brace, we increase it. And whenever we encounter a caps lock is in the way. I mean, this does not feel brittle to me. It's n stop it. <laughs> I am cool with this. So when we decrease the depth, we will hopefully at some point reach 0, which means we have found the end of a JSON object. So what we're going to do here, we're going to emit. And we're going to talk about this later. If we have reached the end of the chunk without having reached 0, you want to we hold know it. that we have to continue into the next chunk, and this current chunk is you part have to, I like the little. Yes, the I, little I do the. That's dancing da, programming. Da, 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 do the chunk. OK, fine. Okay. It's going to help people understand. Sure, I no, I get it. It's great. Uh, so when we've reached the end of a chunk but not emitted it, then we need to chunks, push, chunk, push. This is like when I type. I okay? know. Ah, it's not, not a good I'm day. the one that does the typo. Day. He's the one that's normally really good at typing, and it's really annoying to me because he's All right. really good at so, it. So we are now in the middle of some chunk. We have reached 0. We know the start of the chunk okay. is part of the JSON object. The rest is part of the next JSON object. So we're going to split that apart. So we have the tail, u and 8 array. So that's actually an interesting thing, because the, all these typed arrays in JavaScript are basically just a chunk of memory, and you can have different views. Yeah. So we can look at the same memory as a series of floats or a series of ints. Yeah. But also, you can have them in different positions. So we are going to split it apart by just creating new views onto the same memory. So to be clear, rather than, say, copying this array into two separate arrays, you're just creating two views onto the same memory underneath, yes. and that one becomes the end of the, l the object, and the next one becomes the start of the next object. Exactly. OK, fine. So what I just realized though, that for this, we need to know the position, the index where we're at. So I'm going to rewrite oh. the for loop to do the old. Oh, I was feeling really smart. I know about it was that. nice, but you know, length, fine. i plus plus, done. All right, so the tail goes till i plus 1, because at i, we have the cl closing brace. So the next one is where we want to cut. And we have the next object where we kind of do the same. And we start after. And if we emit the last parameter, it means okay. all the rest of it. So I, because i is the curly brace, i plus 1 is the next character. Yeah. Fine. So, and because we can't, after this, we want to continue working on the remainder. 
I'm just going to get a little bit tricky and just say we're just going to overwrite our chunk oh, because that's no. the next thing we can work on. All this kind of stuff really ruins my head. Well, oh. so tail is, as I said, part the la last bits of our JSON object, so it's part of the chunks array. So now at this point, we know that the chunks array is our next JSON object, but potentially split into multiple chunks. Yes. So we need to convert this into a string. So you got several potentially uint eight arrays that need flattening down to a string. Yes. Got it. And sadly, like, to, to convert a buffer or an array, a, a typed array to a string, we need to use a text decoder. Sure we do. Sure. So it's, it's a little bit, okay. it's just, sometimes I wish this would be simpler, but it's just Next. how it is. Yeah, okay. um, and what we can do is we can use this dot chunks dot reduce. Ooh. We're going to start with an empty string, and we're going to take the string and the chunk. And we're going to concatenate the string with a decoded version of the chunk. And that is going to be our JSON string. Sure. Is this correct? I think it is. And now we have a JSON string, which we can. Is there, is there, is there a German word for the feeling of sadness you get when something is really convoluted? I think you could say something like um, Simplicismus Mangelverzweiflung. Pardon? Simplicismus Mangelverzweiflung. I love it. That's Tell my favorite CSS. Tell them what CSS is. Um, wait, it was Kaskadierende Stilisierungsvorlagen. Yes. More stuff should be like German this. always has a word. All right. All right. So we have JSON string, which we can emit. So we now have actually turned it into a string. We okay. can push that out. And now the only thing left to do is to reset our state. So we have to say this chunks is now empty because we're done processing it. That is true. You could also set dot length equals zero. Can you? Yes, you can. Do you say I can do this? Yes, really. Yes, you can. I did not know length was readable. I'm trusting you. <laughs> Awkward. Awkward. And, and now this is, and, and <laughs> because on the next loop we want to start at zero, but it's a for loop, so i plus plus is going to happen, we have to set i to minus one. No. That's Ew, a little weird. That's gross. But, all right. Oh, so. you're not chipping that, are you? Yeah, I am. OK, all right, sure. So Let's prototype. I'm Quite not going to sure. run this code on my big treat file. I'm going to take it on four, because otherwise it's going to take too long. It's, it's, it's just, no. OK, so if this goes right, we're going to see four tweets. Why no, we're not. not. Line 13. Ah, people are paying attention. I like it. What is on line 13? Oh, oh. byte is not defined. Yes. yes. So byte sure. is our chunk i. See, it's, it's judging you because you changed my four const to that. It, and I typoed decode. Yay! Oh. So let's make this a bit bigger. So we can now can see that we have four individual console logs which contain exactly one JSON object, which means the alignment works. But, and there is always a but, so let's show you why. What if there's an opening brace in a C, C, I, C. That I, would I not said work. So it if I do that, solid. we would see nothing because the, the parser would see, oh, opening curly brace. An object started, but it's in a string, and we didn't know that. Exactly. So what we have to do is we, it's actually not that hard to fix. We just need to track if we are in a string. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, come on. So whenever we fi find a double quote, we're just going to go in string sure. is this sure. in string. Yeah. And whenever we are yeah. in string, yeah. we don't actually care. Now I'm getting that, that word, that feeling, the, the German one about the Does sadness. Does it feel less brittle now? Isn't it nice? No. OK. Yeah, no, it feels perfect, mate. <laughs> Great. So this should work now. Yay! Cool. But Backslash double quote. Backslash double quote. Oh, yeah, he's right. Got that. So, if I, so I guess if I do this, it wouldn't work. Yeah, OK, that's come bad. on. Okay, let's fix that. Easy, easy. Good shout, though. It's a great shout. So if we find something that is escaped, which we have to escape because it's the escape come line. On. You must <laughs> We have to skip the next character. Sure. Um, <laughs> skip next. That is false. Can I revoke your programming license? No. <laughs> and if like, we, so if we have to skip the next one, we have to set it to sure false. false. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. And continue. Sure. Yeah. Yay! All right. And just, just the, the ultimate test is going back to the full file and make DevTools grind to a halt. 
All right. But hey. can actually still scroll because we are not blocking the main thread too badly because this is actually kind of okay. Kind of important, actually. You've gone, got a 16 meg file that's being handled on the fly. It's being streamed and transformed on the fly. And you got, what's the most recent one there? Is that, must be, what, German, in German? Yeah, okay. I mean, I was wondering how, how right. fast is, it's actually, I mean, yeah, there is processing going on, but it works pretty well. I, I mean, yeah. All right, and now. Mike, go on, go on, move it. Right, because normal people, I don't think, would sit there going, oh, yes, I am enjoying your JSON coming down and watching it arrive in the, uh, the console there. Well, I certainly do. I know, right? I mean, know your audience. Um, so we thought the, the better thing to do might be to actually create some kind of progress style. And that's my job So today. as always, you do the visual stuff. Uh, yeah, that's how I roll. So I'm going to make a, an SC dial because it's ah, the supercharged. Although I could have called, I think I might just call it Aero Twist style, so my branding is OK. I can't believe you did that. That is not I wonder if you're going to call it Dial JS or Lewis JS. I want to call it. Or Aero Twist JS? I want to call it Stick to the Script, Summer. Um, um, Aero Twist, not JS. Fine. Yes. Oh, I approve. Fine. I know you do. It's not, it's not what I expected from today. OK, so I've got an SC dial. I'm going to make something called Aero Twist.js. And you know what? I have um, a custom elements. <laughs> I don't like writing these out with, uh, with all, all I the. I can type them by heart. I just choose not to. Uh huh. Um, with all those lifecycle callbacks already filled out for the custom elements 1.0. What's the German for uh, custom or lifecycle callback functions, Surma? Lebenszyklusrückruffunktion. See? Near yeah, there would be one. We have right. words. Normally, normally we have, uh, I'm actually going to call it SC dial. Normally I go with like an unnamed class, but today I'm not going to. Um, that's going to apply to SC dial. And All right. SC dial. Do, 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 do. And I don't need attribute change callback. So just did that just so you have a name for the class because you want to refer to it later. I'm going to, yeah, I've got a feed. Okay. I, I, yeah, we're going to need some uh, constants in here. And so I'm going to refer to them as static uh, members of the class. So. Uh, let me see. What I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm actually going to get rid of this here because I don't I like my log. I know. Well, tough. I'm in control now. I'm the one doing all the right. right. Now, normally, you could do something like this with uh, SVG, but today I'm going to use a canvas Ooh. because I feel like not a lot of people uh, like the canvas. You talk to people and they're like, you know, I did it, but I used the canvas. So you're not going to... I used the canvas. So you're not going to bend over backwards and try to make a div be round and... No. No, I'm going to use uh, All right. a canvas like this. Canvas. canvas is blazingly fast, and I think it's heavily underutilized on the web. And when you use a canvas, you get the context from the canvas like this. And WebGL? No. Oh, just 2D. OK, old school. No. So basically, you can think of the, can uh, of the context as your pen that you move around on the canvas, because you give commands like move to, line to, and you draw See? on See, uh, see I, was, I told you I was going to do some there we are, static ah, constants. get size. So that makes you a good citizen because you avoid magic numbers. I know, right? I feel really good. This dot append child, because it's a custom element, I can just call append child against it rather than something else. It's extending HTML element. But, but. What? Take, like, it's, it's a bug that it works in Chrome, which oh. I always thought was hilarious. You are per spec not allowed to manipulate the DOM in the constructor of a custom element. You have to do it in the. Works. It's a bug. Works. Move it, move it to the connected callback, because that's where you're supposed to do it. Because technically, you cannot rely on the fact that the DOM is already available in the constructor. It, it works. could still like, float in the ether of custom elements. It works. And then I probably should remove it, but whatever. Um, in the All right. <laughs> sure. So um, the other thing that we're probably going to do is, so what I want is an API where we can set a percentage value for the dial. As the files come down, as we get our 16 megs down, we should uh, set a value. I'm going to say between 0 and 1. Uh, I'm for some unknown. All right, so we kind of need a way to put that value in from the outside, exactly, right? Exactly, right? Yeah. So I'm going to do set percentage. Ah, setters. Percentage. So I guess the reason why you're not just using a straight up property is because we want to tie logic to the fact when somebody changes the value. Exactly right. So if it, if it was like number dot is, n I can never get that right, percentage, you could just be like, I don't know, whoa, you could be like that, throw new error. <laughs> no. See? <laughs> See, people, people don't, there you go. Validation and also helpful error messages. Well done. Hey. Well done. 
I am all over this. Don't worry. I'll tidy it up before it goes onto the GitHub repo, which it will. Yes, our GitHub repo. By the way, it is Google Chrome slash UI element samples. All our previous code is on there. This one will get up there at some point today when we're done. Right. And what? feel free to use it. Yep. And yep. Play around. Yep. So when you set the percentage value, so we're going to get a reference to the dial from outside, and we're going to say percentage equals 1 or 0.5. We then want to draw, uh, which we'll draw with on the canvas. I wonder um, what the draw function does. Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. So what we'll do is we will begin. Uh, so you always operate against the context. So we'll begin path. Yeah. And then I always say, if you're going to do something like begin path, or, uh, path always use, uh, or is it close path? Uh, always put its corresponding. Because the opposite of begin is close. Is close. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Welcome to the web. I know, right? So we want, I'm going to do like a, a circular dial, right? So I want an arc. So like a normal progress bar, but bend into a circle. Yeah, whee, all the way around. Um, so it, oh, I love this. Um, so I've got to do x, y, radius. OK, fine. So I'm going to say mid, mid, and mid. Now, I haven't defined mid yet, so that's fine. Zero. I, I, let me guess. It's the middle. Oh, you're so good at this. Yes. Fine, fine, fine. No, 0.4. I'm just ma I'm guessing an angle, which is in radians, just because I want to check that it draws something. Because when you're working with a canvas, sometimes it draws nothing. And that's fun to debug. Yeah. So const mid equals sc dial. So we're going to go for the size. I'm going to hand tune we're this. We're getting some good mileage out of the two. constant. What? We're getting some good mileage out of the constant. I know, right? It's all over the place. It's going to be great, this. Don't you also want to do like, like a half? Shush. Shush. See, that didn't draw anything. Do you know why? Because after you've closed the path, you actually have to say it's to the context to fill the path. Yeah, because path just defines the path. And you have to say, what well, do you can stroke it, or you can fill it, or you can probably do both, you know, I think. Do you know what you need to do as well? <laughs> you actually need to call draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a day. Oh, there we go. Hey, we got something drawing, at least. I mean, Thanks. Um, you're easily excitable. Now, now, the thing is, that's not really what I wanted, because I, I, mean, want I want to kind of pie, kind of. I mean, it makes sense, because yeah. you just say, go here, draw arc, and then go back to your start. Yeah. It, it's correct. Right. And as always, you did the mistake, not the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So the fix for this is to actually move your pen to the middle, middle. Because like you were saying before, it's like, you think of it, the context is like a pen. So yeah. if you move the, the pen, as it were, and you say move to inside the begin path, and you say mid, mid, it draws the kind of pie chart kind of that, pie. That's good. Oh, which is good. Um, so now that's, that's pretty good. So what else are we going to do? Let's see. Let's call this the outer arc. I mean, I, I find it a little weird that it kind of starts to the right, because you know, we, we oh. all learn to read the clock. So I feel like, OK, fine. You know? Yeah, that's fair enough. Right, so yeah, he's right. It, you wouldn't normally go out to the side, would you? If you're going to start progress, you start at top middle. Now, one option here would be to take this start angle as being 0 and just do like minus 90 degrees. But uh, it, in the interest of showing something else uh, to do with the canvas, I thought I would do it like this. Uh, we do a rotate. We rotate the canvas, which is going to rotate the coordinate system. And I'm so going to do Yeah, the coordinate right. system basically gets turned. Minus SC dial dot. See, I'm such a grown up. 90 degrees. Really? The constant for 90 degrees? Look at that. I was like a proper. But half doesn't get it on constant? No. I mean, no. Um, right. Return math.py times by 0 0.5. Right. Didn't we just say sometimes the canvas draws nothing? Yes. Um, I know what this is, because I've seen it before. Um, it's because we're actually rotating around the top left-hand corner. We're actually rotating around the origin, top left. And oh, what we so we're kinda, we have this thing here, and we're mm -hmm. rotating it out of uh, view. Uh, so we're drawing up there. Where right. uh, cool. Yeah. Anyway, just to help people. Uh, so uh, you're basically just going to move the origin yes. and then go. I'm gonna, so yeah, if you move the origin with a translate, um, and if we move it to the middle, middle, so we move it to the mid, and then we rotate, and then we move it back again. It sounds odd, but it, it will I work. It makes sense, but otherwise you would have to. Well, yeah. I, I don't know how else you'd do it. It is, it is right. So now? There you go. Yes. That's like good. It. Here's another thing. I think what we'll do is we'll do an inner arc while we're here, and then we're going to actually wire it up to your code, <laughs> which is now legacy code. Ew. We started out at bleeding edge, and it's already obsolete. I've, no kidding, mate. That's, yeah. um, right, so math.py times by 2, because we want a full, I want a full sort of circle oh, you're in the went middle. full circle. Ooh, 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 ooh. This will be fun. This won't get anybody upset. What? We'll call it tau. 
Um, you flame bait. Apparently, this has support in this room. Hey, um, Some mathematicians are like, yes, yeah. you should use tau, which uh, is the same as two times pi. Trolling. Right, so we'll do this dot ctx dot fill, fill style equals. Well, let's do it white. There we go. And oh, so you, okay. tell you what, I'm going to need a fill style here. So for now, I'll set that to back to the black. Uh, and now, that doesn't look great because yeah, it's no. the same radius. I mean, no. But if I do mid times by 0.8, boop, look at that. I'm now getting oh, nice. So we get like a little we're thing. We're, that we're good. Oh. We're good. Now, let's wire it up to your stuff. Oh, um, yeah, let's pipe in actual the, the loading percentage. Yeah. So we'll do percentage, which will be a value between 0 and 1 times by. SC dial <laughs> dot tau. <sighs> OK. Uh, which will be will disappear because the value is 0, which is fine. So actually, and this time it's working as intended, even though we don't see anything. Absolutely. So Good over stuff. here in your thing, I'm going to get reference dial equals document dot. And this is where we can say this is not production code, because now we're kind of mixing concerns. It's my module was supposed to take care of loading. Awkward. And now we're also kind of like patching UI stuff in there. It's but fine. you know, for for the sake of how to do this, it's valid, I think. Sure. So keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep typing. Stop. Okay. So if it's done, well, we know that dial dot percentage is one. That's fine. That is correct. And for everything else, we actually want to know how many bytes have come through the wire. So we need the total bytes. So let's say bytes total. The um, HTTP protocol can help you with that. Yes, it can. With the headers dot get, and then we're going to ask for the content length, and then I'm just going to parse int on that. Oh, here we go, back here. Oh, yeah, there. because it's a string. And if you divide by string, yeah, things not are not be fun nice. in JavaScript. Right, so we know the total number of bytes if that header comes through, which I'm relying on. Um, let bytes counted be 0, sure. Now, if we get down here, we're going to have to say we're going to add oh, on yeah, So to we can just count. increase by the number, by the string length, because, that's, because it's JSON that is equal to the number of bytes, that's because the there's no Unicode things. Yeah. Bytes counted over bytes total. Yeah? Should go right. between Looks zero and one. Looks good. Yeah, that's not. I mean, kind of. Sorry, just for the, just. We could just say this is intended and ship it. Sure. Do you know what's going on here? The, the canvas is uh, it's a state machine. Uh, effectively, so uh -huh. uh, every time we call draw, it's, tr it's rotating the canvas by 90 degrees. Whoop. Oh, so we keep just rotating and drawing. Yeah, like, like da, 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 da. Cool. That's, that's obviously the drawing. I mean, it's a nice um, effect. So what we can do here is we can actually um, ask, before we do that, um, the, the rotation and so forth, we can actually ask the canvas to save its, its stuff, its state, basically, yeah. like what's the fill style, everything like that. We can save it. And this is another one of those moments where if you call dot save, you immediately figure out where you're going to call this dot ctx dot restore, where you're going to bring it back. Because otherwise, you're going to push something onto a stack, and you're never going to pop it, and that won't be fun for you. Oh, so this will basically revert to the previous state, except all the drawing that has happened in the meantime will persist. Yeah, yes. So here okay. we should now go round. Ah, That's well, definitely is... better. But it's actually, you probably can't tell. I'm going to zoom in. There you go. It is oh, that's very pixelated, isn't it? It is a bit. Yeah, it's really jagged. And the reason is because you also have to clear the canvas. It is. Oh, you know, quite so a, canvas oh. by default draws actually smooth, which is why this is surprising. But we keep drawing over and over the yes. smooth edges, so it adds up to not smooth. So we'll do the size, and we'll do the size. So we, we're going to This clear has it. to be one of the most efficient constants ever created. See? Right. Much that's smoother. A lot smoother. Now, while yes. I'm here, since it's not in the middle of the screen, I'm going to move it to the middle of the screen. And I, I do. I like doing this. Style, style. There you go. HTML okay. body. Oh, let's do width. I, I do that all the time. Ah, you want to? Oh, are you going to do the, the, the master discipline of CSS of vertical centering? Yay! That's good. When people are like, you can't do vertical centering in CSS, you can say, sure you can. Display flex. If you can. Align type. items center. Justify content center. Smile a happy smile. Hooray! Right. Next up, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change this color from black. And I'm going to do. I was about oh. to say it looks a little bit yeah. monochrome. All right. RGB one two eight. There we go. That's a blue color. But let's make it nicer. By let's see. Well, let's do this as a template string. Oh. Oh, stop it, Paul. There we are. Told you I made typos. Let's do so. We'll do what this dot percent. Whoa. 
That's that would be interesting. Yeah, that would be weird. Times by 255. Oh, so we're going to go from like blue and no red to blue and full red. Except we're going from black to pink. Pink. <laughs> Why? Because RGB values have to be rounded. Oh, so once you have decimal points, CSS goes like no, black. No. OK. OK. So hey, we're doing all right here, aren't we, mate? All right. Yeah, we're good. Look. We're what good. else can we do? Oh, we could put an actual number in the middle to tell you how far we've actually got through the downloading. Yeah. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that here. So we'll put label, 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 label. See how I'm actually doing? I actually am doing comments because I know when you come back to Canvas code in just like half an hour after this, and we're going to try to upload this, we will have like, forgotten what it is about. Yeah, it's right after regular expressions where you're like, really? <laughs> it's like just face on keyboard, and it still kind of works. Brings out guys. my prettiest faces. That one. Right, OK, uh, we're going to do fill text. So we know we want to do that. Oh, we should set the color for that. CTX.fill oh, yeah. style. Yeah, equals. Let's do it as a kind of gray color. All right. Fill text. Uh, I personally would prefer 333, honestly. Really? OK, fine, fine. Oh, you're not normally that bothered by this kind of stuff. Fine, 333. Slightly darker gray. Percentage times by 100. Okay. And we'll do it at mid mid in the middle of the dial. Sure. All right, sounds good. I mean, sure. I would ship it. Sure. Uh, do you know what? This is actually a great opportunity to talk about the restore. Because if we do the restore before the label. Oh, it's still turned. It's still turned. So we'll do that. That'll put it back where it needs to go. Right. That's a start. And then we can do, let's see. We math. should probably round this too. Math.round. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't, people don't care about like the 15th decimal place. I know, right? It's tiny. Look at how tiny that is. OK, let's make it bigger. This. Yeah. CTX dot font equals. Let's have a look. We would want to do. Let's make it a one of these, and we'll say, oh, uh, oh no, wait. SC dial dot size. See, it's oh still because so you'll make it dependent on the. That is good. Quarter the size. PX Arial. Sure, that's going to be fine. Okay, sounds good. Symmetry. I mean, <laughs> and uh, the thing is, you don't handle negative feedback very well. So. Um, the thing is, I feel like the bottom left corner of the one is actually perfectly centered. Yeah, it is, actually. Um, it's because the, the text baseline and the text alignment it will mean that it is for the bottom left-hand corner, which we can change by saying this. Dot I thought we'd have to like measure ourselves or something. No, no. Doable. That would be awful. Can you imagine? No. no. Let me just do this. Text baseline. Oh, because I like how one oh, is middle and the other one center. Twice would be, yeah, would be too easy. So Flexbox is a center, center. SVG, yeah. Sure. Let's not talk about it. There you go. Round nice. Um, but I think what we can do is we just add ourselves another label because we can. Um, um, this one, I'm going to do this more. one at 777. Is that OK? All right, I'll let you have it. I mean, let me, OK, let's do this at like, oh, I don't know, 0.06. I love just guessing numbers. Um, I don't think, yeah, you can just. I, like, number fishing is great fun. You're like, 0.6, 0. Yeah, how, 0.6. Why did you stop using like constants now? Huh? Huh? Don't know what you mean. All right, percent. That's rubbish. Great stuff. Um, let's do minus 20 plus 15. Sure. Ooh, close, but not quite. <laughs> Minus 20 plus close, 20. Close, but no cigar. There we go. That feels, no, I don't like that. Looking good. Minus 15. Well, when is 14? Go on, then. Plus 26. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? I mean, it looks good. I feel pretty good about this. Can, can we do this with network throttling, just to have like, a little bit more can time? Can we do it with what? Network throttling. Oh, sorry. Have, I, like, didn't, I, I didn't More time to Sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because at the moment, this is no throttling. Um, so imagine, then, we were to click on that, and it was regular 4G. Now, this is actually really important, because we're now not blocking, as Summer's code showed you, we're not blocking on this stuff coming down before we show anything. Uh, and we're actually able to give the user some kind of information. And if you needed to do something with those tweets, like json.parsing them, shoving them in IDB, something like that, you could be doing that kind of work here, too. We, we could already be rendering parts of the tweets, because every chunk contains one tweet. So we could start listing things while there's a progress bar in the top. And yep. The and main thread is still available, as you can see, well, because it can draw. Let's do that. In fact, let's, we have just about enough time, I think, to get away with this. So on the connected callback, we couldn't call draw. Um, I'm going to do a request animation frame to call this.draw. And I'm not going to call it anymore. So it's going to go into this kind of busy, it's just always going to draw. 
and it's going to probably break. I'm not going to spend ages explaining why. It's because the request animation frame, the, the, um, when it's called, this stops referring to the class instance and starts referring to window. So the way to, uh, to fix that it's is It's the Lewis bind, as I call it. Yeah. Dot bind, it's weird. But so this we, we cover it this. in every single supercharge because I always end yeah. up doing it. Right? And since that's draw, drawing every frame now, we should be able to do a recording here. And we should be able to see that so this, it's, is, this is, if it works, it's work. comfortably at 60 FPS. We have loads of headspace, headroom in our per frame budget. But and we're, we're, getting so, we're getting something to our users really fast. And we are out of time, but just a reminder, we've covered streams, transform streams. We've covered custom elements. We've drawn Canvas stuff. We've got you something which is taking 16 megs of Java, uh, JSON. And I, th and and I think we're in under 200 lines of code or something. Yeah, let me just check. We are, I mean, not the, this is a reminder of just how awesome the web platform can be, because you've got, what, about 110 from me, and you've got about 70 or so from you. So that is about 180 lines of code. And we've got something that I think is reusable and quite interesting. So there you go. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hope you've had a great time.